Today's readings, we can hear Jesus asking us to live lives of faith and hope and charity. Those who are true followers of Christ, they don't live ordinary lives. They live extraordinary lives. Their lives are extraordinary, not necessarily because they do great things, but because they are guided by the Holy Spirit in what they do. Even the ordinary things become extraordinary when we live life in union with God. It's living the theological virtues that means, that's meant to distinguish us from non-believers, from, them, from those who don't believe in the Lord. In the first reading taken from the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, we heard of St. Paul's missionary adventures. In this verse 6, we read this. It says, They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. That's Acts 16.6. Notice what St. Luke, the author of the book of Acts, notice what he says there. He says that part of the work of St. Paul was actually blocked or prevented by the Holy Spirit. Now, a historian or a scholar might say that St. Work's missionary work was prevented. He was prevented from going to Asia because... Maybe there was a virus outbreak, if you want to use a contemporary application, or because he didn't have enough money for the journey, or because it was too Jane dangerous for him to travel in hostile neighborhoods in order to get there. That's what a historian or a scholar might say. But the scripture says that it was actually the Holy Spirit who prevented him. And we tend to focus on secondary causes. What, do, what does that mean? Well, we say that, you know, the reason I couldn't do this or that was because of this difficulty or that difficulty or because it was a state shutdown or because someone at home got sick or I fell and broke my wrist or whatever. We, we tend to focus on what we can see and understand. And certainly those things are causes, but they're secondary causes. What's the primary cause? God. God is the primary cause. Someone recently pointed out to me a passage in St. Faustina's diary where she too was wrestling with how to respond or what to do with her limitations and the roadblocks that were coming up that with the work that Jesus had entrusted to her. And she wrote this, in paragraph 788, she wrote, as I was conversing with the hidden God, he gave me to understand that I should not be reflecting so much and building up fear of the difficulties which I might encounter. Then Jesus uh, said this to her. He said, know that I am with you. I bring about the difficulties and I overcome them. In one instance, I can change, in one instant, I can change a hostile disposition to one which is favorable to this cause, unquote. Jesus said, I bring about the difficulties and I overcome them. And we probably need at least an hour or so just to reflect and explain that. It sounds like something that we'll find. You can even find the prophet Isaiah where God says this. He says, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create woe or create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Isaiah 45 verse 7. What's our Lord trying to get us to understand? Not not that he's the author of evil. No, that's not the message. The message is simply that he is in total control of everything. Uh, but first thing he wants to do is for us to take to heart those words which he said to St. Faustina. Know that I am with you. Know that I am with you. As a side note, since we are in the month of May, we'll just mention that our, whole, our lady's whole life and her mission, well, we can say, you know, her whole life and her whole mission were summed up in those first words that the angel said to her when he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Luke 1, 28. The Lord is with us. He wants us to first of all take that to heart as far as anything that we have to deal with in life. God wants us to live a life of faith in him, not in anything or in anyone else. When we live a life of true faith, then what happens? Well, we see Doors will close in some places and doors will open in other places, even where we didn't expect them. We heard that at the end of the first reading. It says, during the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, when we, had, we, meaning 
St. Luke and him, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Acts 16, verses 9 and 10. So God closed the door to Asia, and through a vision, he opened the door to Europe for St. Paul. And since St. Paul trusted in the Lord and was able to see God's hand in everything that he acted, he went to Macedonia to preach. St. Paul had a tremendous faith in God, and because of that, the Lord was able to do great things in his life. So whether or not we're missionaries like St. Paul, we're Whether or not we're called to do great things, we're called to live and have a great faith. Not just a faith on paper or a faith in our heads, but a a faith that is reflected in the choices that we make and the way that we see and experience things and in our thoughts and conversations as well. In truth, through baptism and confirmation, we are all missionaries. Uh, To be honest with you, wherever we go, whatever we do, we're preaching something. We're preaching, uh, the question is, what are we preaching? Are we preaching our Lord or are we preaching ourselves? You know, if we, we've got to have a vibrant faith. If we do that, then we will preach Jesus in the things that we say and do. Secondly, we need a life of charity. And we see that in today's gospel taken from John 15, where Jesus says that the world will hate us, but that we are not to respond with hate. We're, we're to respond with love, with supernatural love. Because you do not belong to the world, says Jesus, and I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you, John 15, verse 19. We shouldn't expect to be liked or uh, appreciated by everyone if we live according to the teachings of the church. Even a number of people who actually go to church and who are in church, uh, sadly, they won't understand or even accept us they won't understand us if we if we want to be faithful catholics sadly we need to learn to embrace that cross and all the other crosses and and be at peace about them you know in the cross we will find our peace and just like god's peace isn't the world's peace as we talked about a few days ago so too god's love is not the world's love the world's love tends to focus on what we can get for ourselves god's love focuses on what we can give of ourselves. The world's love is full of emotion. God's love is different. It's devotional. It's full of devotion. The world's love tends to focus on external beauty, which potentially excludes uh, a lot of us who aren't uh, beauty kings or beauty queens. Uh, God's love is different. It focuses on internal beauty, which potentially includes all of us. No one's excluded from God's love. The world's love is passive. It's something that they say happens to you. And it's, it happens to us. They say, I fell in love. But God's love is different. It's active. It's the choice to do good, the choice to give of ourselves. And that doesn't happen unless I choose to give of myself. The world's love comes and goes. God's love endures forever. The world's love is often selfish and untrustworthy. God's love is always selfless, and it's completely trustworthy. It doesn't mean that human love is something to be looked down upon. No, human love is a good thing, and it's a blessing in many ways. I think most of us know that, or all of us know that. But what it lacks, what it can lack a lot of times, is uh, the supernatural. Uh, If human love lacks the supernatural, it's incomplete. Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, he says, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, said Jesus. Luke chapter 6. As Catholics were called to a supernatural love, uh, which means doing good for others out of love for God and an imitation of Jesus who died so that we can live with him forever. Lastly, if we live a life of faith and love, God's type of love, that will increase in our heart the virtue of hope. Hope isn't something that we go looking for in another person or in a political figure or in some future reality that may or may not happen. Hope is a theological virtue. 
as it's its object, the possession of God and eternal life. So either you have hope within you or you don't. Uh, either you have it or you don't. Uh, don't go running around looking for it because you're not going to find it that way. Our hope is in Jesus. St. Paul even calls Jesus himself our hope. First Timothy 1 verse 1. And he says in First Timothy 4.10, he says, For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Jesus once said to the Pharisees who were asking when the kingdom and where the kingdom of God was going to come, he said to them, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, behold, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you, said Jesus, Luke 17, verses 20 and 21. It's that way, too, with the virtue of hope. You know, don't look for it outside of you. Look for it inside of you, in your heart. And when you do, listen for the Lord who says to us, I am with you always to the end of the world, Matthew 28, verse 20. The more we live for Christ, the more that virtue of hope will grow in our hearts and also the virtues of faith and charity. I'll just end with one uh, somewhat of a practical example. Uh, it might seem a strange example. Uh, I know I was a friar was telling me once that when he was in seminary, uh, one of his superiors or the superior of the house basically was saying to the friars, you know, as part of the virtue of poverty, you know, the vow of poverty, don't have any excessive things. Don't hold on to excessive things, that you, things that you don't need or it's superfluous. Don't hold on to them. So this friar said to me he had uh, a Sharpie pen in his, uh, in his cell, and he would uh, kind of every week he would see that Sharpie pen, and he'd say, well, I'm not using that. Uh, should I give that away, or should I give that to the superior or not? Uh, it wasn't really a scruple, but he was just kind of, it was keeping, it was sticking in his head, you know, maybe I should give that away. And then he would forget it and then uh, go back the next week, he would see it again and say, he said, one time, uh, he said, okay, he saw it, and he said, oh, yeah, okay, I'll just give it to the superior. I'm not using it. So he took the pen, he went to the superior's door, he saw the superior's door, uh, the superior had the keys in the door, so that meant he was there. He knocked on the superior's door, he opened up the door, and he said, Father, here, I've got this pen, this Sharpie pen that I, that I have with me, I'm not using it, uh, I don't know if you, I just, just want to give it to you. He said, at that moment, the superior had in his hand a blank CD, and he was actually looking for a pen in, on his desk uh, to write uh, on the, the CD what the title was, what, what, what he put on the CD. He couldn't find a pen to do that. He said right at the same time that the, the friar banged on the door and, and gave him the pen. And obviously, the superior was very happy to see that friar uh, in that moment. Uh, I just give that as an example, you know, a, life, a supernatural life. That's a, an example of you know, having a supernatural perspective on things, the good that can happen. Uh, when we choose to live life in a supernatural way. We know that God will never be outdone in generosity, and whatever we do for him will bring a lot of blessings and a lot of unexpected surprises as well. So let's ask Our Lady, Mother, and Queen of the Angels and Saints to grant us the grace to live a life which can be filled and will be filled with faith, hope, and supernatural charity.